Hey folks, we are back for another episode of It's Consulting Time, where we are always bringing you a plethora of creatives, innovators, and leaders from around the globe. Purpose over popularity is our motto, and we pride ourselves on honoring legends, as well as introducing aspiring and emerging independent creatives to the world. Remember, we are always prepared to leave you with joy, jewels, and justice. Let's chat with our special guest. Hey guys, we're back, and today, we are going to talk a little bit more about literacy, but we're going to talk about literacy in the aspect of being a best-selling Christian author, Christian blogger, and a song lyricist. And so guys, I want to present to you uh, Mr. Alan Black. Now, he grew up in the United Methodist Church, and he proudly embraces his background, but he emphasizes the importance of the relationship and not the denomination that you are part of. Alan Black, welcome. Thank you so much. This is so awesome. I've been waiting for this. I'm so honored to be here with you this afternoon. Yes. Well, look, to everything, there is a time and a season. Come on, quote this. And let's talk about the purpose. Yes. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> Absolutely. So introduce yourself to everyone, then let's dive right in. Wow, that's a really layered way to start the interview because I, I find myself at times, I have to kind of step outside who I am to really share who I am, if that makes sense, because I was always taught to just kind of put your head down, just keep moving forward, you just don't look to the left, you don't look to the right, you just do what you're going to do. So, but I am Alan T. Black and I am in Omaha, Nebraska. And I, I do know that the, the popular idea is that there's nobody out here in the middle of the country but cows and Matt and Kitty and Matt Dillon and the Gunsmoke folk. But we just want you to know that no, that's not true. Uh, Omaha is the largest city in the state of Nebraska about with the suburbs about half a million, so it, it's, it's urban. And so then when you go out west, leaving Omaha, headed towards the Colorado Boulevard, I mean border, then yes, that's when you start getting into the, the rural area. But I'm definitely urban. I was born urban, I'm gonna die urban. I'm I not know from... that's right. <laughs> no. Hey, you know what? I, I, I did the farm thing one time as part of a church outreach group. And I'll never forget, I actually shared one of these uh, the stories in one of my first book, my first book. Okay. And so I'm about 12 years old. I'm from the hood. I mean, I grew up in the project. I'm just keeping it 100. So, so we get to go stay on this farm and just kind of get to know people across ethnic groups and everything. And these folks came in and woke me up at five o'clock in the morning. I thought, was the house on fire? What's up with this? You know, I'm looking around like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? They said we were ready to go out and start working in the and doing the crops and start picking corn and stuff. I'm like, what do you mean at five o'clock in the morning? I can't see. I said, why don't we do that about noon? They said noon, they done. I'm like, well, at noon, I'm just getting up. So we got a problem already. We got culture class to begin with. So, but you know, I look back at that, and it was part of the growing or part of the experience of learning and broadening your horizons. So I was very blessed by that, and I didn't appreciate it at the time, getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go out and work with farmers. And I'm thinking, look, hey, man, I'm from the hood. We ain't doing nothing before it gets hot. Okay, no. I'm just being real. No. But again, it was good. And so it's been an amazing journey to, to get to this point. For your listening audience, I'm very proud to say that I'm 67 years old now. So it took, yeah, it took a journey for amazing. me. Amazing. To- and to the listening artists, let me just tell you one thing that is absolute fact. God is not a respecter of our age or if we think we don't have what it takes to get it done. Because mm-hmm. from the authorship side, I did not start writing until I was 60. Wow. And that's what I was going to ask you. When did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? Age 60. Wow. And let me just share with the audience, it was not something that I had any intention or plans to do. I'm kind of giving the backstory. 
my real passion passion is to be a lyricist and the lyricist is obviously that person who is helping to create the story that you hear in each and every song i've always been fascinated with that from the time i was like seven or eight years old so that's really where my writing began in earnest and i remember now and it's been what 47 years now when i was a sophomore i think it was a junior in college and I started writing lyrically some ideas for a song and everything. I'll never forget. I went to see my college professor. And I shared with him what I had a dream to do. And I was nervous as I'll get out. I, I was so scared to go talk to him. He was like my mentor. And I'm like 20, 21 at the time, something like that. And anyway, so he kind of read what I had come up with. I just wrote out as far as a, a story outline. And I'll never forget. He told me, he said, you know what? you've got some talent here. You really need to kind of work on this and see how far you can go with it. And he gave me a contact of one of his uh, friends who was in the music business back East at that time. So this is about 1975. So for a lot of the listening audience, this is back in the dark ages before electricity probably think, but anyway, but I'm saying that I'm sharing that story because it really, now that I look back, it really emphasizes the power of the words that we have that we pass along one to another. Because he could have very easily have told me that I was wasting my time. That I just need to worry about working on my studies to get my degree. But he didn't do that. But I can't say point blank, had he told me that, I probably would have stopped right there. So it's important for us to keep in mind that whatever we're sharing, the words that we share and we speak into somebody's life, it is so powerful. It can alter somebody's destiny. It can crush somebody's destiny if we're not careful. Absolutely. So from that point on, 75, I just began to just do some things lyrically, collaborating with some local people here in like gospel, hip hop, R&B, soul, pop. And over the last four or five years, believe it or not, I've even collaborated where I provide the storyline and somebody comes up with the music. I've done a couple songs in country. Now, my friends have looked at me like, okay, you came out of the project. How did this country thing happen? And I've explained to them that a, a writer, in this case, a lyricist, you're creating a story. And so then your responsibility as the lyricist is to decide what is the best genre of music to, be, to express the story that you're telling. So in reading over the lyrics that I wrote, I said it needs to be country. And so I was blurred, very blessed to reach out to a company in Nashville. They did the music for the song, and they came out really good. In fact, summer 2021, I got some airplay over in Europe for about two or three months, and they did really well. So I'm, I'm still wanting to go back and do that. And that's my real passion, passion. But a strange thing happened in 2015. I had already retired from my job at the university. I was in uh, education, teacher education. So I'm working part-time, just doing a hotel reservation, just to kind of keep my mind active in everything. And so I would work in the morning from like six to about 10 or so, just part-time. And really, and honestly, because I'm on Central Standard Time, between six in the morning and eight in the morning, there wasn't really much going on. It was just kind of slow and I didn't have anything to do. But I just kind of started just kind of freestyling, if you would call it that, just writing out different thoughts and everything that kind of came to me. And God started directing me in that path or on that path to just kind of start creating what I would call inspirational stories. And, and I'll never forget, I remember I had written the first two or three for my first book, Here I Am Lord. And I remember I got up from my desk i went and got some water i came back and i couldn't remember what i'd written it, it, it's it scared me because i would sit there and i would read it and i couldn't i couldn't remember writing it and so after the third time i, I reached out to a friend of mine who's a pastor and i said well bro i kind of need to know what's going on here because i'm writing these short stories the Christian based, the inspirational, but I don't remember doing it. And it scared me simply because my background, as far as being in education and working in teacher education, is very 
organized, very logical, that kind of setting. So for me to start doing this was completely out of the loop. I was in a whole different arena. And so I was talking to my friend, the pastor, and I said, well, am I losing it? Am I, am I losing my mind? Well, what's going on? I'm kind of scared. And he asked me, he said, well, are you willing to be open to what God's calling you to do? I said, well, yes. Now, I'm not going to pretend I said yes, and I was enthusiastic and jumping up and down because I was like, okay, yeah, I kind of said it like that. He said, well, God's speaking to you, and he wants, what he wants you to do is to write what the Holy Spirit's given you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I said, uh, okay, let's, let's see how this works, because in my heart of hearts, that really wasn't what I wanted to do. I want to still do things with music. That's what I wanted to do. But I just kept writing and writing and writing. And so by the end of 2015, I had accumulated about 10 or 15 of these and I didn't really know what to do. So I asked a friend of mine to read them over and and she was like, oh, this is good. You should write for a blog and everything. And and honestly, I looked there and I said, what's a blog? I don't even know what that means. You got to remember, I'm 60 years old. I just died. I just died. 60 years old. I'm from the generation and I'm trying to keep up. Yes. So fast. So I said, well, what's a blog? And she she said, well, this is what a blog is. She showed me. She said, well, why don't you send some of these to a Christian blog to see if they're interested? I said, okay. And I I at first told her, well, I didn't think I could do that. And I'll never forget. She says, well, because she was one of my former students. She said, well, you were teaching me at the university to always follow your dreams and not back away. So how come you can't do the same? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I had an attitude right there because I'm thinking, who is she to be telling me what it is I need to be doing? I'm the mentor, and she's my protege. But then I had to get out of myself and say, you know what? She's got a point. She's right. So I wound up, and this was in November 2015, sending some of my essays to some Christian blogs across the world. They all said no. And then the very last one I sent it to was a blog in Singapore called Christian Blessings. And to my shock, the editor emailed me back the next day. She said, I like this. I want you to start writing for me in January 2016. But then she really scared me. She said, well, I want you to write for me every week. I said, wait, 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 wait. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I said, hold up. First of all, I don't even know what I'm doing. Secondly, I have, I I know where Singapore is on the map. I'm never going to get there. And I said, you want me to write every week? She said, yeah. I said, well. How about every month? What's a month? She said, okay, I'll agree with that. And I'll never forget, she told me for January 2016, she said, I need you to come up with a topic that is tied to the beginning of a new year. She said it had to be at least 300 words. I said, okay. And after I got through email and accepting the assignment, I sat back and I thought, I said, you know, God, 300 words is way too many words. I can't do this. It's impossible. And then she wants me to come up with a topic brand new to start the beginning of a new year. I said, man, you have got me in the corner in here and I'm just done. I, I can't do this. And so I kept trying to figure out what to do, what to do, what to do. And I'll never forget two days after Christmas, 2015, December 27th, I'll never forget. I'm driving home and I hear this song on the radio, Old Lang Syne. And we've all heard that. And part of the lyrics, again, here's the lyrical connection. Part of the lyrics say, will old acquaintances be forgotten? And it hit me. And so my first writing for Christian Blessing in January 2016 was Old Acquaintances. That's from my first book. It's from my first book, Here I Am Lord. And the synopsis of that particular essay is, Each year we start out Mm -hmm. and we talk about what I want to change, what I want to do different. Absolutely, absolutely. What are the old acquaintances that you want to get rid of? In my case, it had to be fear. It had to be a lack of faith. So that was my old acquaintance that I had to get rid of. So, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you I'm a brilliant writer and all that because I'm not. Uh, Everything that I've ever written, point blank, has come through the Holy Spirit by just being obedient. 
Absolutely. And, and I think it's important, guys, if you're just tuning in, I think it's important for us to really, you know, just put it out there. A lot of, there's a difference between a talent and a gift. Thank and you. we're gifted with things that often we don't even know that we have until one day we just do it. And, it, and, and it's just, it's like, oh man, I just did that. Thank you. You didn't have to practice. It just happened. And so, you know, Alan, you are utterly amazing, you know, relative to your writing and, and even the, the lyricism. And I love the way you defined being a lyricist. Now, now, what to you are the most important elements of good writing from your perspective? I think from my perspective, because I'm just doing it and I don't really, if it sounds weird, I don't think a lot about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I think as much as anything, if this sounds very simple, I think you just write for what's on your heart, what you're being led to do. And I think a lot of times we overcomplicate the whole process. And, and one thing that authors who are established or who are beginning want to keep in mind is the fact that, and I had to learn this, one of my biggest concerns was when I wrote my first book, well, my first book was only about 130 pages or so. And I was really thinking, well, is that going to be enough? And somebody taught me, they said, well, you know, the bottom line isn't about how long the book is. It's about what's inside between those book covers. It's the about quality, the, the quality of the content, not the quantity. Yep. And I even had another former student. She's an author as well. Well, she's written two children's books geared toward uh, black young ladies, young girls, about eight, nine, somewhere in there. And I purchased both of her books because I still support my students, even though I, haven't, I left the university 10 years ago. But both of her books are actually like 20, 22 pages, something like that, but they're beautifully written. So when I'm speaking with people about being an author, I just try to keep it simple. I tell them, just write what's, what's on your heart to write and everything. And I've also explained to them, because of technology, here we are in 2022, because I've had people say, well, I don't have the time to sit down and write and everything. I said, well, you're overthinking it because all you've got to do is hit the record button on your phone and just record a little bit each day because when you get through, you can get somebody to transcribe it and everything. So just don't overthink it. And so they, they looked at me and they said, well, that, that seems real simple. I said, well, that's it. Just, just do it. And in this era too, you have so many options to self-publish. Because when I finished up oh, with my oh. first book, I, in the process of writing my first book, I actually talked to a gentleman who went the traditional route and went through a publisher and everything. And, and I mean to tell you, it, my conversation with him was 20 minutes of absolute negativity. It was negative. It was doomsday. It was like, you're going to waste your time and all that. And I can believe it. I can believe it. When I got through talking to him after 20 minutes, I hung up the phone. I thanked him, of course, for having taken time to talk with me. And I thought to myself, you already I, had another way. Look, you were already preparing for what was next. I trust me. I, I'm there. I'm there with you all the way. <laughs> I, bro, I don't know what your story is, but God didn't bring me this far. No, me. he did not. <laughs> No. I, you know, sometimes you've got to shake off the criti critics and the Absolutely. doubt. Absolutely. You've got to move forward. So, and you're going to have people who are going to tell you, well, I don't think you can do it or whatever, but you've got to make up your mind that you're going to press on and answer the calling that's been placed on your heart. So, Absolutely. and that's how I've gotten to this point. Um, I'm still kind of in a state of disbelief after seven years, and I just, about a week ago, got my third book out. It's an ebook, and that was called Just a Closer Walk. And that was starting to get out there, get noticed, and everything. And again, it's the same process of just, just being obedient and just answering the call. That's really what it's about for each of us. If if I were to leave a, a permanent message of some type with the listeners, I would say answer your call, 
And don't be afraid because the call that you have is for you. And believe it or not, sometimes you're not going to be able to explain that to other people. No. About what no. You're gonna, because they're going to look at you with a blank look on their face and they're going to say, I don't get it. But That's you know, right, because it's not for them. Absolutely. Absolutely not, not for them. That's not who it's intended for. So you just got to go on and do what you've got to do. So yes. <laughs> it's been amazing. I'm still in a state of disbelief because I've been fortunate to get great interviews with wonderful people like such as yourself. I've gotten um, some magazine interviews that I've been able to reach out and amazing. work with. And, and I look back and, and I think, you know, this has been an amazing journey that probably began in earnest back in 75 from the lyrical side. And it goes to show that sometimes the journey that you take and the road you take, you might think you're starting down road A, but at some point you may cross over to road B, but you didn't get the road B without going down road A to start That's out. That's it. That's it. That's all, you know, and, and it's not even a fork in the road. You can just merge. You could just merge. And I think that's the beauty. That's the beauty, guys. If you haven't heard anything, understand that your journey is your journey. Your call is your call. And it's not for everyone else to understand it. You know, Mr. Allen Black, he just told you that. He just told you that. So guys, you definitely have to, you know, go over to um, his website and, and check him out and just see what's going on. He's an author. He's a blogger. He's a lyricist. Hashtag in the spirit intended. So Alan, let everybody know where they can find you on social media and any final words for our listeners. They can find me on social media. I'm actually on Instagram. I'm still learning. Yeah, trust me, my my social media person pushes me to say, you got to do Instagram. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. Uh, it's Alan T. Black 55. Five. That's A L A N T B L A C K 55. Five. 55 five is the year that I was born. So I want to try to figure that out. And then my, my website is Alan T. Black.com. That's A L A N T. B L A C K dot com. And I since we've set this up, I'm also probably didn't mention it doing a I co-host a radio show with three other brothers as well. Okay. So we at the show is called AJDW Conversation, and it's four black men from four different religious yes. backgrounds. We come together every week and we just talk about all kinds of different subjects and everything. I love and, it. It's unusual because realistically, four maybe say twenty years ago, you wouldn't have had four men with four different denominational backgrounds willing to sit down and talk with each other and become friends. So, I've oh no, four- it would have been a whole lot of arguing and throwing the Bible. And oh yeah, I know absolutely. So I, I've been doing that. I'm also now in the process for the last three months or so. I'm writing with a a blog called The Dreamers Collection in South Africa. I've started writing for them over the last four months. And, you know, if I release something with the audience, I'm going to share a story that my father kind of taught me. And it's a story about Peter walking on the water. And so we always hear the perception that, okay, Peter started walking on the water and he began to sink of course. And so, but my father flipped it. He said, well, you know, Peter started walking on the water and he did sink, but what were the other disciples doing? They were just sitting in the boat. And he was teaching me that the boat is the place of safety. A lot of people are going to stay in the boat because that's where it's safe. But how many people are going to get out and walk on the water where the real challenge is? And he said, yes, you're going to sink. But you've got to keep your eyes on the prize and keep pressing on where you're going to go. So I've learned that. Wow. (laughs) Guys, listen, we're going to close out with a lot of people stay in the boat. That's it. Be safe. But will you dare to be different, fearless, filled with faith, and walk? on the water 
jump on over in there and stand up and make it do what it do because you got to start somewhere. Mr. Allen Black, thank you so very much for being here. We are elated to have met you and keep doing what you're doing for the people. With in such the spirit a- intended. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, guys, until next time, we'll see you. Much more joy, jewels, and justice on the way.